time high congratulations to every one of you watching this uh past present and future traders we've been waiting for this for a couple of years now nobody said we would get here there was the naysayers uh we fucking did it so congratulations to every one of you big big episode tonight uh, a massive day in cryptocurrency for btc so proud to be sharing this moment with you of course everything that we do here at utg for the last three years hit that subscribe button uh, and join us here on youtube as we do this every single day Ding! hit that notification button uh, as i said big episode tonight btc f xrp a couple of the others that we're talking about um ads and i were just talking a minute ago as well about trading at spot versus trading at leverage uh ads we we hadn't scheduled to, to talk about this but I, i'd like to open that discussion with you a little bit about why the benefits of trading at spot are sort of becoming a little bit uh lesser for the average retail trader we're gonna have a look at the cot indicator as well Adams did a really good video a couple of weeks ago about the cot indicator showing you how retail uh, professional institutional traders are, are, are playing this right now. So it'd be very, very interesting as we have a decent pullback here. This uh, pin bar on the four hour is a little bit telling of where we may be headed in the short term. But as without further ado, oh, 
Also, very quickly, we've created some cheat sheets for you, some really, really helpful cheat sheets. You would have recognized some uh, some triangle patterns, some pennants, flags, all that good stuff. We've got six of our best uh, chart cheat sheets that appear all the time throughout cryptocurrency. Head to unitytradinggroup.com, punch in your email address, it'll take you directly through to the next page uh, where we've got some really high quality PDFs. You just click on the PDF or click on the image and it will instantly open up the PDF, which you can print out, put it at your trading station. Uh, you don't want to miss those because you see those all the time. They are money-making sheets, those ones. All right, ads, BTC, let's get into this thing. Uh, what an amazing day for you. <clears throat> Absolutely, it has been. Uh, been monumentous, monumental run, to be honest, uh, after we broke out of that uh, short-term level of supply at 16, sorry, 16, uh, 19,650, pretty much. Uh, it's just been on a tear. Uh, so... Yeah, it exceeded my expectation, to be honest with you, bro. Mm. Um, it mm. really, really did exceed my expectation. Um, it's not something that I expected to get this far immediately, but it's not surprising that we have ended up at this 1618. The 1618 on the uh, on the, the trend-based Fibonacci is quite significant, uh, and it does really, uh, does really attracts the price like a magnet um we all know fibonacci uh is a good guy for one um but we all know fibonacci uh in terms of the levels the 61 the 61.8 uh fibonacci level is the most respected level out of all of them there's the 38.2 which is really nice mm. on uh on uh, a bullish or a bearish move for uh to make lower highs and 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 uh, uh higher lows in how, however, in terms of the overall structure of FIBS, the 61.8 is the one that we really look for. It's the golden pocket between the 50 and the 61. And in this instance, with trend-based Fibonacci, we've really taken it from the swing low to the swing high back to the bottom of the pullback to give us some ranges to the upside, all right? This is really my way. This is the way I do it uh, at UTG to really gauge what levels are going to be above us. And uh, it has played out pretty perfectly, not exactly. And you know, Fibs is never going to be 100% exact, but it's pretty close. And uh, because we don't have any prior data to really go off uh, at these levels, it's the best that we can do pretty much. So we're looking at the 23,556 for our high there uh, at the 618. We're getting a pretty decent pin bar at the moment. So in the way of where we're headed at, at this time, uh, looks like we're getting hitting some resistance to that six six one eight, and so we should be. Uh, we're we're quite overextended now on this time frame. Uh, what do you reckon, Ty? Poor man, surely after that sort of parabolic run, we know that all good runs must come to an end, albeit temporary, perhaps in this case. But with such moves to the upside like that, we need to cool off. We cannot keep pushing. Well. I refrain well, from it's saying it's obvious we, that we can't keep pushing. We, we, getting... we can't, but you know, yeah. technically looking at where we are now, we shouldn't keep pushing. Steamroll is very overextended. Our oscillators are massively overextended. I think a lot of bullish news came on the back of uh, more institutions jumping into BTC, mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of dollars exchanging hands over the last few days uh, for major investment firms that are looking to, to have set quite major allocations of, uh, of BTC. <laughs> Um, you know, th that sort of run. We, we spoke about this level uh, last weekend. We spoke about this double pattern, uh, double bottom pattern, where if you had had your cheat sheet as well, you would have seen that we had uh, some, some bullish divergence there as well, where we pushed off uh, another significant sort of level in terms of um, this demand, although it wasn't a significant demand, it, uh, it had a little bit of support for or MA support that when we were looking at it previously in the week as well but yeah totally this um this run surely cannot be sustained and as ad said there we have a a very decent pin bar here now on the four hour that's not always indicative of a, of a pullback but certainly you would think that that uh that one two seven two level would be our first level to hold uh because of uh, not only the the fib extension but also this trend line that we've got there from this parallel channel that ads has got drawn in there uh, but from there, I think even a, a pullback to the sort of the 21 and even the 20s would still be healthy in, in the, the scheme of this uh, run ads. Absolutely. We're not, 
And we're not saying that this run is over. We're not saying that no, this is the top. No, we're not BTC runs. Hell no. No. So this is um this is just something that we're we're expecting. You know, since we've had a decent pullback already, if we look if we jump into the lower time frames, you can, or even if you jump into lower time frames yourself, you can see we've had uh, a decent swing there, nearly a thousand dollar thousand dollar wick at the moment at twenty three five hundred to twenty two five hundred. So yes. something that's a decent level and that's pretty healthy in my opinion already. Uh, to hold the one two seven two is going to be uh, the next crucial thing, and of mm. course uh, to retest the top of this uh, you know trend line of the the parallel channel that Ty just mentioned there as well is going to be the next crucial thing for BTC, um, and that's really uh, a segue into. Did you want to say anything, bro? We well, I, I'd like to look at our COT uh, indicator yes. and ads posted a really good video. It was the indicator you need to know uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, what it does is the COT indicator looks at the buying or selling pressure of retail traders, institutional traders, and professional traders as well. So you've got the bar chart up here as well. There's also the indicator which you can yep. get on uh, on TradingView. I think you just type in COT ads. Is yeah, that correct? Right. Yeah. And then it brings it up. So tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here on uh, on this bar chart. Now, disclaimer before I start, uh, this only measures the commitment of traders on the CME. All right, so it's not it's not measuring uh, physical BTC held by institutions. It's not measuring physical uh, BTC held by large speculators, uh, professional traders, or retail traders. It's just the CME. All right, so we need to be mindful of that before we get into this. Um, if you haven't watched this uh, our video, I can link it uh, in the video description after the stream. Um, but uh, I do encourage you to go back and have a look at that video that as we posted it, it was a couple of weeks ago. But really, we're looking at this this first one here with the three basically moving oscillators in blue, red, and green. So down the bottom, you've got the report, you've got the small speculators, which is the blue line is at the top. Basically, what that's saying, it's a retail investment, retail small traders. Uh, that are pushing the price on the CME specifically up. Uh, we're talking about professional traders or commercial traders. Um, so that might be in the way of uh, larger accounts. That might be the, in the way of uh, you know people trading on behalf of an institution or behalf of a large speculator. Uh, but uh, that's mainly held steady for the course of this run. And then we've got the non-commercial, the large speculators. This is like hedge funds. These are big large managed accounts, all right, that might have uh, people working for them to manage that account on the CME. And we're looking at that in declining volume now. Uh, so I was just, we and Ty were just having a discussion that the CME uh, large speculator uh, yeah. oscillator was decreasing at around the 12,000 mark. Um, and we were, we did say in the Discord, uh, we did say in multiple uh, multiple editions of our you know daily updates that if you were scaling out at 12,000 uh, or even 16, 18,000, uh, that's a bit high anyway. Um, but for what I'm about to say that we did say is that uh, you were doing exactly what a professional trader or professional uh, you know manager would do. You're looking at uh, a whole lot of market data. You're looking at a whole lot of RSI data. You're looking at you know, just uh, price action in general, and you'd be scaling out of positions around that 12, 16, even 18K. That is normal. That is normal. That's a normal reaction. Um, and if you're still in the market at the moment, uh, I know for one, I am, and I know uh, for, for a fact that uh, my partner in crime, Ty, is, we are uh, scaling out, we are decreasing our risk in this in this market at the moment as well. So that is not something. It's not financial advice. I'm not saying for you to do it. That's what we're doing. Can't hear, bro. Sorry. The the aim of the game is about managing risk. It that's right. What your position size is. You've got to get into the psychological habit of, of not not being bummed out because you're missing a run or because you're missing 
you know, parabolic sort of moves or whatever it is, there's always going to be another trade. It does not matter if you miss this run or any other run. There's always going to be BTC. There's always going to be crypto, Forex, whatever it is that you might trade. So that's the the, the benefit of something like Fibonacci, for example. You can look mm-hmm. to scale out 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever it might uh, be for your trade plan at each Fibonacci level. And that's what I've been doing myself. So getting to where we are now, where, you know, we still have a, an allocation of BTC. And as I've said many times for years, I still have my BTC stash which sits on the cold wallet and i don't touch that's 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 money for 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 20 30 years from now so don't get discouraged if you miss any sort of runs but just understand the name of the game is risk risk management and uh and sticking to your trade plan so don't (laughs) don't fomo i'm not (laughs) at at this point uh by any means so you know wait for things to simmer wait for the you know you, you can you can wait for major you know um times of the day where where most of the price action occurs whether it be a daily close you could wait for a four hour candle to, to simmer off you could wait for a weekly candle to simmer off before you're making a buying decision but don't go into a position halfway through the middle of a candle when things are, are pumping and um and buying buying uh things stupidly mm. um there's a couple of things we wanted to discuss tonight uh, yeah. so this was one of them. Yes. Uh, the se- there's, there's a couple things before we move on to any altcoins or anything. Um, so the second one was, uh, steamroller, steamroller on a high time frame tie. Yeah. Yeah. So, steamroller on the weekly, yes. particularly, even though we've got a little bit of data here, if you were to, to pull out, uh, some of the, the data on the smaller time frames where steamroller has, has been overextended on the sort of a 2017 run, but looking at where we are now, the accuracy of steamroller on these time frames is uh, is absolutely ludicrous you can uh, go to unitytradinggroup.com you can get a 14 day free trial of uh, steamroller at the moment but looking at where we are now yes we're in a, now in a, a new era of price discovery for bitcoin but looking at our even our major oscillators on the weekly don't mm. Don't um, don't discredit the higher time frames. I think as as swing traders or whatever type of trader you are, we get so transfixed on like the one hour or the four hour or the daily, which is great. But sometimes you need to zoom out to these higher time frames to get, to really get a sort of an understanding of of the the very macro scale of things. And the weekly is uh, something you should be paying attention to at the moment. I think ads. Yeah, absolutely. The weekly uh, look gives you the most data. It gives you the most accurate in terms of moving oscillators. Um, and especially does in the way of uh, our home, our, the one that we've developed here in terms of Steamroller, where we've got the accuracy pretty much bang on on you know a time frame like this. So look, always zoom out just a little bit, maybe have a look at it every every once in a while. It doesn't change very quickly, um, of course, but uh, something to keep an eye on, I think. Um. I'd like you to just, if you're comfortable to do so, I know I didn't ask you about this, but we were just talking about buying at spot versus leverage and a few other things before we jump on. Did you want to explain that again? I thought that was a really cool insight. So um, if you've been in our Discord for quite some time, you'd know that I am predominantly a spot trader. I do trade on leverage every now and again. Uh, I do dabble in a lot of bits and pieces uh, in different markets, but uh, most of my BTC trades are sitting in spot. I have a vastly different trade plan to a lot of people out there. Uh, so, and I manage my risk quite well in my opinion. However, uh, in terms of the discussion myself and Ty had with, in terms of spot versus leverage, uh, I wanna bring something to you guys, all, all of your attention if you trade spot as well. And this goes for BTC, it goes for Ethereum, it goes for everything that goes you know, up to the wayside and it is vastly expensive. But BTC is the main pair that really, uh, you know, is really in the spotlight for this sort of uh, this sort of argument. Not an argument, this sort of just uh, mindset, I think. So the higher that BTC goes, um, the more leverage is important because uh, I'm talking in terms of retail traders. That's really what I'm really uh, referring to here. Someone with, you know, not a million dollar account, not even a hundred thousand dollar account, not even a fifty thousand dollar account, someone who is uh, a mum and dad, someone who is, uh, you know, a small time retail trader. We're talking about, you know, maybe 25K or less in terms of account or capital size. Um, it's becoming less and less. If BTC stays above these prices, if we stay above 20,000 or we stay above 19 or 18 or 16K, um, but more so if we stay above 19 and a half or maybe 18, 
and we stay in this uh, era of price discovery where we keep going up and up and up, you know, test 30, test 26, you know, test 25, what have you, whatever it may be, uh, spot is less and less likely to give you a decent return. And what I mean by that is the higher we go, the more money it takes to push the price up, as we all know that. However, the less percentage difference between your entry and your exit. So we've we all perceive the chart at the moment as we're looking at it as a as a monumentous run uh, that we've had you know since the the start of December to now we've gone from 17 to 23, but we're talking about a percentage of 30 percent. That's fine, that's great, but that's not my point. My point is it's not the same as when we were back at six grand and then we go to 12 because it takes a lot less money to move the price from six to then to 12. And that is effectively uh, price irrelevant 100% in terms of a trade if you bought at six and sold at 12. Now, if we buy at 22, the same trade would take the price to 44. And then it would take a lot more effort, a lot more capital, a lot more money into the market to get it to that point. So leverage, my whole point is leverage is becoming more and more important because for retail traders, it's not likely that you're going to be buying an entire BTC or you know two or three BTC at twenty two thousand, expecting to sell it at forty four, when uh, you know leverage is available and you can do it with a lot less capital. So the spot trading is slowly, slowly becoming less relevant as the price goes up, which is which is a sad thing in my opinion. Um, because spot's been around a long time, we all we all really started on that sort of uh, trading mindset in terms of spot trading, and I've been doing it for quite some time now. So uh, it might be worth your while. Uh, I know BTC is the big dog, and we all want it. And, you know, we we have uh, very good plans for it. We know we're all bullish on it long term. But it might be time if you trade spot. And I'm not saying to go to leverage, I'm saying maybe you should expand your horizons if you trade BTC USD exclusively, maybe you should look at ETH USD because that takes a lot less money to move uh, 100%, for example, or XRP a lot less money to go from 30 cents to 60 cents. Yeah, and the unfortunate thing is, is that a lot of new participants into this market are your average mum and dad retail traders with maybe just a few thousand dollars worth of, of capital and they yeah. see leverage as the be all end all sort of money making scheme and they start trading at, you know, 100, 125x leverage and, and below complete counts, especially on something like BitMEX where, uh, you know, cross leverage can ruin uh, entire accounts very, very quickly. So, you know, while we're, we're not saying um, to, to go play on leverage at really high levels like what ads was was just uh, warning against a moment ago, this is where your EF, your XRPs, your other USD pairs. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of shit coins out there where people will get uh, you know, sucked into the to the hype around a particular coin, and then get um, and then get smashed. So, you know, your higher market cap coins, in my opinion, are the ones to to focus on outside of BTC. If you want to start playing with USD pairs, where, as I said, there's uh, less capital inclusions at the moment, and it's going to take a little bit less money to move the market than what it would at thirty thousand dollar BTC. Yeah, that's exactly my point. And you can always fall back on BTC as you would do in a Forex mindset of looking at BTC USD to gauge the direction uh, for the other pairs that are, that are paired against USD. So BTC is always gonna push or pull, uh, you know, drag Ethereum up, it's gonna drag XRP up to a certain degree, you know, drag a lot of these USD and USDT pairs up with it. So you can always be looking at BTC, be aware of it, have it, you know, in a cold wallet somewhere like Ty does, and then actively trade those smaller cap coins for you know more of a percentage difference between when you enter and when you exit because that's really all that matters at the end of the day the price re realistically is not relevant it's both basically where you bought where you sold and then the percentage difference between the two is really what matters I'll roll it somewhere yeah like exactly right all right, let's uh, F USD. Speaking of which, what a perfect segue. Let's jump into that and have a little bit of a look. BT, uh, F USD. <laughs> fibs, 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 fibs. <laughs> steamroller, steamroller. Come on, man. Come on. Is are you not? Are you not impressed? Come on, man. Steamroller's the shit. I 
I fucking love Steamroller. All right, 27 extension. Here we are now. We've pushed off. We've double bottomed, as we said here, uh, from this point now, the 51, right from that golden pocket. We've made this uh, gorgeous, gorgeous W pattern. We've broken the neckline. We've pushed from the 23. And here we are now at the 27 extension. Uh, a lot of, again, a lot of our oscillators very oversold. I think mm. in the scheme of things, maybe the RSI got a little bit more to go, but uh, where we are right now, do we keep pushing? Do we pull back to that sort of uh, that six seventeen level? F is uh, F is really really. It has been for for the majority of the year. I said that F would give us uh, you know fantastic gains this year, and it and it certainly has. But um, F is really really on my radar. It is, it is, and it, and uh, I remember you saying that towards the start of the year as well. It was um, something that. Uh, you know, had high hopes for in terms of, um, you know, there's some fundamental bits and pieces. I know it's had some struggles over the years, uh, over the year, sorry, excuse me, over the last 12 months, but in any case, it has still performed, not as, uh, not in the same fashion as BTC admittedly, but it's still done quite well. So that's okay. Um, the 27, like you said, has been respected. If I just, if you just bear with me one tick, um, let me get in, because we do have some previous data to go off on this one. Uh, let us get the next level above uh, in there for you if I reset the chart. So if we were looking at this, it does have uh, a whole bunch of room on the daily time frame. And that 50, if you haven't got the 50 drawn in on your RSI, you need to get that that shit happening immediately. Um, because <laughs> first time I've heard you swear on this stream. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're not monetized yet. But um, <laughs> so... The, the 50 the 50 needs to be on your chart if you haven't got if you have RSI you need to have the 50 in there um, because that's going to give you a fantastic base for you know lining up levels of demand lining up levels of support and of course lining up the 50 uh, with your RSI is very important so if you don't have that that's the next one I'd be looking at in terms of a next level for ethereum if we do continue this upside momentum and if btc does continue it's going to drag eth up anyway as well the next level would be that 700 mark that coincides nicely with our uh, 61 fibonacci extension in terms of the fibs that we've got on the chart currently and then of course it coincides nicely with the next level of supply which is uh, on a nice pivot in terms of the the movement down that we had I believe earlier this year, if I'm not wrong. Yes, it was, no, last year, May, May, 8, May 2018. Um, that would mm. be my pick for Ethereum. For the immediate term, however, on a smaller time frame, it would be pretty healthy for me to see Ethereum probably retest uh, this level at 6.30. That would probably be quite healthy for Ethereum, I think. Even retest some of these levels or this liquidity to the left-hand side, which is 6.20, so probably $20 difference, not a whole lot. But it would be quite healthy on this time frame, in particular the four hour where we've completed pretty much that market cycle. And uh, we are to come down, even if we come back down to the 50 on the RSI uh, to give us that retest. Anything can happen otherwise, but uh, that's what I think uh, should happen for Ethereum. Yeah, and going back to the daily time frame as well, we've spoken about this so many times uh, in, in the past. Not only is that 50 so great, but also the parallel channels within Steamroller as well, mm -hmm. acting as levels of support, which we've sort of seen there beforehand. Yep. You can use these levels here on Steamroller as um, as levels of support and resistance. So it's uh, it's a very dynamic indicator. But yeah, that that 50 little uh, that little 50 RSI hack is uh, is is crazy good. It's respected so so many times on so many pairs. It's uh, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, that's a good one for F. F still very much on my radar. I've had a, a good allocation of F uh, since sort of like the low four hundreds, and I think that will uh, that will will continue on. I think F is 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 gonna have it, its time very shortly. We've had yeah, we've had a good run, but um, you know, I think going back to that spot argument, when people can't afford thirty thousand dollar BTC, the next sort of, sort of one in line, in my opinion, is going to be uh, is going to be FUSD. So could very much see a, a good uh, capital allocation from a lot of new buys in the coming months. All right, so let's go to XRP USD. Not not playing alts whatsoever. I'm not even really paying any other um, XRP pairs. I'm not really paying any other USD pairs at the moment either. But XRP uh, is definitely another one on my radar ads. Absolutely, it's on my radar because I'm in this one as well at the moment. Uh, BTC dragging this one up. Not as much as I would like, but uh, not a bad one in any case. 
the one that I was really looking at is this level of uh, demand here, uh, using the retest on the right hand side at 46 cents to really gauge on how, uh, how big or what size the level of demand should have been. And uh, fortunate, I was fortunate enough to get the buy uh, at the level that I wanted and of course pushing it up now. Looking for XRP at the moment, uh, if we are to see this continue and it looks like we have gotten that reversal looking at Steamroll, looking at some of our oscillators as well, uh, looking to see the 78 fibs I believe that is, no 38.2 the other direction. Yeah, 38.2 would be the next level I'm looking at. Of course, some of the liquidity to the left is quite significant at that level as well. So it does make sense for it to uh, end up there over the next little bit, probably next couple of days time. Yep, totally. Uh, that They're really the, the only pairs that, uh, that I'm looking at myself. I'm not branching really any further out from that. I think mm. one other thing that I've also been looking at on XRP as well. I'm not quite sure the the validity in in your opinion ads is sort of is this oh hang on wrong one the downtrend yeah oh <laughs> come on <laughs> come on kid get it together boom is this sort of formation so we're sort of retesting this okay, yeah yeah that that was sort of the the formation that I was that I was looking at so um, yeah, it looks like we've had a, a little retest now of that uh, of that downtrend line, and if you sort of breakout traders, this might be where you might be paying mm. a little bit of interest in uh, in XRP again. Steamroller gave us the the uh, the entry signal there, right off that demand zone, and and that's if you want us to do a, a, another session on this sort of our UTG trading strategy when it comes to demand steamroller and fibs uh let us know maybe we can run a session on that in the future on how we end up uh, you know purchasing uh purchasing crypto at a pretty decent little levels like this uh, and it's quite an easy strategy so let us know in the comments if you'd like to see that all right let's get into the dxy now in this reg market of course anything we look at when it comes to uh, forex or otherwise in these regulator markets is purely just opinion and education only if you want more information, talk to your financial advisor. Don't go anywhere. We've got a, an announcement to make after this regulator. Ooh, yes, we do. I probably stuff. should have said that at the start. Yeah, we've got a, a huge announcement to make on something that we get asked about all the freaking time at the end of this session. So stick around for the next five minutes and uh, we'll have something really special to share with you uh, next week that we'll talk about in just a second. All right, so the DXY, obviously not a regulated, sorry, it is a regulated market, not financial <laughs> advice. <laughs> it is regulated. Well, not market. regulated, not regulated. This is where you should buy all yes, in. Don't, uh, yeah, don't do that. Uh, just changing that. Excuse all me. In. Okay, um, so the DXY, we've been revisiting this uh, pretty much every day. Uh, I've actually shared a chart this morning, I believe it was in the Discord, uh, you know, giving you the correlation between the DXY the B and the BTC pair. And I think this might be a, a not a direct correlation, but it is connected, of course. We are seeing BTC go on a monumentous run and obviously the DXY is losing value. So uh, that does make sense. And uh, it also makes sense that we are continuing the trend to the downside. Uh, nothing new there. If I look at the daily time frame where these levels are drawn, uh, there are some levels to look for. Okay, so we're through this supply uh, demand here, excuse me, at around this 89. We're getting through that now, uh, more than likely over the next little bit, or we could say over the course of this evening and into tomorrow, we might be through that level. Uh, there's one more level in between that I wanna look at, which is there. We're looking at 89.49 or 89.50. Uh, that's the area that I'm really interested in uh, for now because we've got a decent amount of liquidity to the left-hand side and it's a support resistance flip scenario that we've got there. And of course, we've got our four hour level of demand just underneath that. So that would be the next area for me on the DXY over the course of, uh, you know, pretty much the end of the week. I think uh, we're heading into Thursday night now. Tomorrow night will be our last trading session. So 89.5 would be the area that I'd look towards for Friday and of course, uh, Friday night, Saturday morning. Uh, and of course tonight as well. Moving on, SPX 500 has been surging to the upside. Uh, we got a very short pullback, didn't quite uh, stay around the 36, uh, sorry, 36, 37 line for very long. We got a, a wick down to really retest that liquidity area to the top. So when we were, when we were up here, excuse me, when we were up here making that, uh, uh, that pivot point, I said more than likely we'll probably pull back uh, quite 
you know, briefly towards our liquidity or our resistance or support uh, flip there that we had on the left hand side. And that's what happened. And we are moving to the upside now. So 12 hours till this market closes the SPX 500 index. So uh, there's some ways to go and more than likely as BTC has, we'll see this continue to the upside also. And that really reflects very much on the uh, S&P or the ASX index or, uh, sorry, excuse me, wrong chart, or the, uh, the All Lords. So the All Lords is the top 500 Australian stocks and uh, it is moving in the same fashion as uh, the S&P or the SPX 500. And of course, we did get our pullback to the 50 Fibonacci, which really coincides nicely with the liquidity area alongside the 38. And we've got the movement to the upside coinciding nicely with BTC. And this really goes hand in hand with BTC gold and of course the DXY declining tie. Beautiful, man. That uh, I think that just about sums it up. Now, for this huge announcement that we are uh, talking about, we should have probably said this right at the start of the stream, but uh, we get asked about a, an indicator that we've been developing for a couple of years now. I think it would be on par with our Steamroller in terms of the best indicator that we've ever created. It's a scalper's dream. Uh, and the more we've back tested it, the, the better it seems to get on every time frame. It was initially developed for you scalpers. Uh, but it's an incredible indicator. We get asked about it all the time. That's Gravy Train, our brand new UTG indicator. Uh, we're going to announce something very special next Tuesday and allow people that want to be a part of this 100% free to sign up to a waiting list to be part of our one and only beta tester crew. We're looking for beta testers to test this indicator, give us feedback so we can make adaptations. And those people that do sign up will, of course, look after you when uh, when this goes live early next year. This has been the culmination of probably a lot of hours of development, thanks to our evil genius and a lot of input from ads and uh, ads and myself as well. And we're super, super pumped to share this. We don't uh, share it much on our charts because we don't want to sort of reveal too much. But uh, as of next week, anyone who's interested in getting a hold of Gravy Train uh, free to help us develop it to these last final stages, uh, we'll have an announcement for you next Tuesday night. And I think we'll cap it at probably no more than than 10 or 15 people. So it's uh, it's first in best dress. So whether you're a scalper, swing trader, breakout trader, this indicator fits everything, Cads. I really can't think of anything more to say on that. It's an absolute weapon of an indicator. Absolutely it is, man. It's uh, a lot of the OG guys that were back in our, um, our inner circle back in the day, uh, a little while ago would probably recognize this indicator, but it is... A different beast than the one you saw. <laughs> than the one you saw that was in early development. So it has uh, been a long time coming, and uh, we are very excited to get this on the get the show on the road starting Jan. I reckon. Yeah, one hundred percent. Cool. Well, I think that's a really good way to wrap up this session. Of course, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. If you do like what we put out every single day, make sure to hit that subscribe button and get instant notifications every single time we go live, so you don't miss announcements like this. And uh, trade safe, be safe, and we look forward to seeing you in our last market update tomorrow night. Absolutely. We'll see you then. See ya.